Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Today is the day that many Michiganders have been waiting for everybody age 16 and up eligible for a vaccine. Coming up, we'll tell you why it's so important to get vaccinated as soon as possible and where you can get it done. Plus, coronavirus concerns as the state is now experiencing what the Michigan Health and Hospital Association is calling the quote, most severe surge of viral spread in the nation. But first, we are tracking April showers as you take a live look at Storm Tracker 4. You see the blobs of green and even some yellow and uh, orange in there as well. Weather tops our show this noon. Lots of clouds as we take a live look through Skycam. Brandon is on deck with a look at what the timeline is for the wet weather. And will it be a total washout or are we seeing the, the green blob move off to the east? <laughs> The blob is moving and at a pretty decent pace. I think our south zone may struggle with some showers a little bit longer as it's proximity to a stationary front. But you can see some of the heavier showers in yellow and red right there on the Washtenaw Wayne County line and drifting slowly to the south and east. So, you know, might have another. Uh, hour or so as we look live at Comerica afternoon baseball and boy temperatures just dropped about five degrees with some of this rain around. So at one o'clock after the rain, we should get into the low 50s and eventually mid afternoon. We do expect even some sunshine back. But after 5 p.m., we have this stationary front across the southeastern, I'm sorry, southwestern part of the state. And that stationary front will become a warm front. So that could spark some showers again, Jason, around 5 or 6 p.m. And then the warmer temps coming up. Brandon, thank you. Turning our attention to the coronavirus numbers, the United States passes 30,708,000 coronavirus cases and more than 555,000 people have died from the sickness. These are numbers from Johns Hopkins University database. Here at home, we are expecting new state coronavirus numbers this afternoon. It will be a two day total, so it's going to be shocking probably. That's uh, Sunday's numbers and today's numbers. On Saturday, Michigan reported its highest number of new daily COVID-19 cases since early December. Cases have been rapidly increasing over the past month, with Michigan now experiencing the, quote, most severe surge of viral spread in the nation, according to the Michigan Health and Hospital Association. To curb the spread, Governor Whitmer is encouraging districts to go virtual following spring break, but she is not ordering them closed. Some school districts have already made the change, like the Detroit Public Schools Community District. They begin two weeks of remote learning today. The state also continues to hold pop-up clinics at schools to urge anyone who traveled for spring break to get tested for COVID-19. Today, the pop-up clinics will be at Edsel Ford High School in Dearborn, the Wayne Regional Educational Service Agency in Wayne, and Woodhaven High School in Brownstown Township. 37 pop-up testing sites will be open across the state until April 15th. And we've posted more information to clickondetroit.com. Now to what can help stop the spread of the virus, vaccines. Today is a very big day for vaccination efforts. All Michiganders, all of us, 16 and older, eligible for the vaccine right now. We have a comprehensive list of information on how to register for an appointment posted on where else but clickondetroit.com. Meanwhile, let's send it out to Grant Herms. He has more on what you need to know as you make plans to get your shot. Grant. Today is the day all Michiganders 16 and up are eligible to get their vaccine. It means that lines are going to be long as people try to get those appointments. Right now, about 5 million doses of the vaccines have been given out to the state of Michigan. Four and a half million of those doses have already been put into the arms of Michiganders, and it couldn't come at a better time to open up this eligibility as those younger cohorts of people ages 16 to about 50 years old lag far behind their older counterparts. They also make up the majority of those skyrocketing hospitalizations and case rates that we've been seeing for the past few weeks over the last couple days. 
the highest case numbers here in Michigan that we've seen since the beginning of December. So right now officials are urging anybody and everybody eligible starting today to sign up to get their vaccines. Now here at the TCF Center, the, the city of Detroit is still allowing people to call in, make those appointments. You can also get one at Ford Field. We have a full list of where to get your vaccinations and how to make those appointments. No matter where you are, which county you're in, which city you're in, those are up on clickondetroit.com. In Detroit, Grant Herms, Local 4. Grant, thanks. Also making headlines today at 1.30, Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan is expected to make another announcement regarding expanding the city's vaccination efforts. We will keep you posted both on air and at clickondetroit.com. Meanwhile, it's no surprise travelers hit the road and skies this holiday weekend, causing concern that Easter gatherings could lead to another serious surge. The TSA says travel leading up to Easter Sunday was up 800% compared to last year. This has more states roll back restrictions and more than half of the states in the U.S. are seeing a rise in cases. As the trends and data have been indicating, cases are increasing nationally and we are seeing this occur predominantly in younger adults. This is why you've heard me so clearly share my concern. We know that these increases are due in part to more highly transmissible variants, which we are very closely monitoring. And as more schools are reopening, it's even more important to make sure they do so safely with strict adherence to CDC guidance and for all of us to roll up our sleeves for a vaccine as soon as we can. Yeah, and it's really important because there's something out there now called the double mutant variation, even as we're getting vaccinated. So for a closer look at surge concerns, let's send it out to Miguel Amagar. After a weekend of Easter gatherings and a record number of spring break travelers, the fear this morning, another dangerous surge is looming. Michigan now seeing the country's largest spike in cases, reporting its highest daily count since early December. We may be seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, but we are still in the tunnel. While infections are rising in over 20 states, health experts aren't in agreement that a fourth wave is imminent. We will see in the next two weeks the highest number of cases reported globally uh, since the beginning of the pandemic. I think that there's enough immunity in the population that you're not going to see a true fourth wave of infection. What we're seeing is pockets of infection around the country. This as the vaccine rollout is picking up pace. The CDC says more than 3 million doses are now being distributed every day and over 18 percent of Americans are fully vaccinated. Today, eligibility is expanding in seven more states to those over the age of 16. I feel like I'm finally taking part in bringing the epidemic to an end. As more adults are greenlit for a shot, some states are rolling back COVID restrictions. Wisconsin and Arkansas, the latest to drop mask mandates. Pennsylvania and New Jersey are loosening restrictions on gatherings. But a full return to normal may be slowed by variants, a strain first discovered in India, which has two mutations that may make the virus more infectious, has now been detected in California. The evolving strains now threatening to drag out the deadly pandemic. That was Miguel Almaguer reporting. Also making headlines, the murder trial against former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin continues today. He is charged with second degree murder, third degree murder, and second degree manslaughter in the death of George Floyd. Jay Gray takes us to Minneapolis. Hey there, look, as we move forward into week two of this trial, look for some of the emotion to be pushed a bit to the side right now as they get more focused on some of the technical aspects in this case. We expect to hear from Minneapolis police officers, including at some point the chief here, but also witnesses who can talk about the medical aspects of this case, including at some point the medical examiner. The defense has pushed that it wasn't Derek Chauvin's knee that killed George Floyd, but it was his problem with opioid addictions as well as heart disease. His brother talked about that a bit this weekend, saying that really that's just a diversion in this case. It's tens of thousands of people across America who are self-medicated and they get addicted to things like opioids. But I can tell you this, my brother was walking just fine. He was laughing, talking before David Chauvin put an overdose of his knee on his neck for nine minutes. 
Again, as the prosecution begins to focus on some of the technical aspects of this case, don't ever expect them to stray all that far from the emotion as well as that viral cell phone video that so many people around the world have seen and, and something that's really played a key in their case to this point. That's the latest here in Minneapolis. I'm Jay Gray. Back to you now. Jay, thanks. Still to come on the brink, crews working around the clock near Tampa, Florida to try to stop a pond from collapsing and why the stakes couldn't be higher.